Hello there, welcome to another Mext Scholar vlog. I'm Iglika, live from Kyoto, Japan, and today I'm going to talk about how to relax as a Mext Scholar in Japan. Last week I recorded a video called The Hardest Week So Far, or something along these lines. So I thought it would be important to also show how I have been trying to relax and not get overly stressed out uh, about my university work as a Mac scholar. So actually the interesting thing is that right before this week that I talked to you about where I had to do um, two presentations each of them like really encompassing a lot of material really important I actually did a couple of things that were strictly non-related to my um, research work first of all um, I visited the island of Naoshima with my family. I had been meaning to go there for a while because I have a friend who works there and it was the weekend before these two presentations that we actually planned this trip. So needless to say um, we had an amazing time. Uh, we took the Shinkansen for the first time. My son just loved it. It goes very fast, obviously, not that you can feel this so much as you're traveling, but really you just cover the distance so quickly. Um, what else? So when we arrived, we had to go to a port. Um, we went to the town of Okayama, then we went to a port called Uno Port. From there we took a ferry, we had some problems with taking the ferry, but I'm not going to go into detail about that. And then we ended up on this little island. Uh, first we took a bus, but then we actually walked a lot. The island is known for its uh, contemporary art. There are several art museums slash galleries there that we visited. There is uh, the sea, obviously, it's an island, so we walked along the beach quite a lot. It's the first time I saw the sea in Japan, so I was really interested to spend some time uh, nearby and to look at the seashells. I really love looking at and collecting seashells, so I appreciated that. As for contemporary art, you know, sometimes it's just uh, like a stone on a white uh, board. Sometimes it's really interesting. I'll try to include a couple of photos of things I've seen and I'm going to also show you a couple of souvenirs that I bought there. We also had an amazing lunch by the way, it was yummy and we had a 50% discount because my friend works there. So this is actually the symbol of the island, it's a pumpkin. It exists as a large sculpture that you see uh, on one of the main ports as soon as you arrive on the island. This is actually a postcard, but I don't think I'm going to use it as one. Uh, then we also took a cat that's riding a fish that's... Um, I don't think it's tablecloth, I think it's just like... Uh, handkerchief. These are kind of popular here. And then my son also chose these uh, notes, sticky notes with a cat. Actually the reason why there's so many souvenirs with cats is that there are a lot of cats on the island. Uh, also, my friend said that there are some tanuki, some raccoons, which uh, I found really fascinating, but apparently they appear only at night and we weren't there at night, it was a one-day trip. Okay, another thing that I did, so I saw that the International Cultural 
uh, office at the university is organizing an activity which consisted of presenting your favorite uh, manga or anime and I thought I wanted to participate especially as I saw it was going to be a competition uh, I'm kind of competitive I guess but it coincided with a big research meeting a weekly research meeting that I was going to have so I thought I wouldn't be able to make it or it would be a really really narrowly and I would have to maybe participate while being in the lab and then just quickly move to the next room but actually uh, they changed the timing of the meeting a little bit so it ended up being really convenient to participate I had already registered when I found this out so I had a really nice time um, presenting what I don't know if it's my favorite anime but it is one that I really appreciate it's called The Great Wings and I will actually leave my presentation here to show to you guys I did not win but I was happy to present anyway and the the award for the winner was um, just a, some kind of stationary materials uh, from the university and they also said that even if you were not the winner you could go to their office and they would give you a little like, consolation prize uh, a folder they had said and I actually went there the next day or the day after I don't remember maybe the day after and I explained that I had participated in this competition it did sound a little bit annoying especially if I was like the first person who showed up to ask for the gift but I really I had been meaning to visit this office for a long time it's also them that organize the language exchange program for instance that I think I have mentioned before in the in the vlog so I went there and they presented me with this very nice bag <laughs> it says Kyoto University and as a gift not only did they give me the promised folder they actually gave me two folders that they made me choose it's a little um, whale that's an international student at Kyoto University and I just really wanted it to be not too flashy and to absolutely to say Kyoto University on it but not only that they actually ended up giving me also the things that they were meant to give only to the winner I don't know if it's because there weren't that many of us or they were just super kind so I got this it's a bag with the same character and these little sticky notes with the same character and then since I was there I also it's like a mini library mostly centered on materials for studying Japanese so I had a look around and I took a couple of items home actually three items because that's what we are allowed to take in one go so of course I went for Japanese exam preparation there was a very large choice so I chose this particular book because there are explanations in English and I still feel a bit allergic when I see a large text that's solely in Japanese I haven't uh, found time to deal with this yet but um, I definitely will then I looked at some books some fiction and I wanted to take something that's not too hard to read that I would find time to read so I went for this book of poetry by the Japanese poet Kenji Miyazawa and I also took this book about Van Gogh and Japanese art it's a very easy read it's uh, bilingual in English and Japanese so I thought uh, I actually got to read this too and just some link between them is uh, that Kenji Miyazawa was a Japanese poet who got to be appreciated largely internationally several decades after his death actually he, he was a 20th century poet 
Then Van Gogh also he became really popular in Japan around 20 years after he died and he himself was of course very interested in Japan. So just to tell you a couple of uh, interesting things about these books. So as for Van Gogh, uh, he really appreciated a particular type of Japanese art called the ukiyo-e, these prints that uh, are done in this particular style, very specific, but he really applied his own style to them. For instance, here, that's really his own colors, his own technique. So the way he was influenced by Japanese art was very subtle. Also, at some point of his life, he moved to the south of France um, in the town of Arles. And although he never visited Japan ever, he felt like this place reminded him of Japan. And Japan was kind of his safe and calm place that he would retire to when he was feeling too stressed out, such as um, from Parisian life. As for Kenji Miyazawa, well, I had not uh, been familiarized with this poet at all before taking this book. So he writes about um, nature mainly, about feelings. I know this sounds very cliche for poetry. Also, he was interested in agriculture and science, and you can sense this in his poems. And I actually would like to read a poem to you that I thought was very much in the spirit of this video. It's called Stop Working, right? Stop working, throw down your rakes. I had all the fertilizer planned. I was responsible for the rice plants. And the paddies were flattened one after the other, collapsing in rows. Thanks to this morning's violent thunderstorm and half a month of cloudy sky, it is not only in the factories that work can be demeaning. It is humbling and ignoble to try to conceal your anxiety by working yourself to the bone. Yet, ah, uh, it's happening anew, the school of black death seething in the West. In the spring, it was even called and thought of too as love itself. Now, get yourself on home, phone the weather station, bundle your head up tight, prepare to be soaked to the quick, get yourself out and confront each and every person, all the many faces that are stiffened and one. Go around encouraging them with your fire. Tell them that you will provide them compensation, whatever it takes out of you. All right, so common theme that we saw, kind of the idea of working too much, being too stressed out by modern life and just relaxing, which is what this video is meant to be about and kind of trying to connect with people instead. Okay, guys, thank you for watching this video. And now I'll be leaving you with my short presentation of uh, the anime Grey Wings that I mentioned. It is a three minute presentation. Actually, there was a time limit and I think I managed to fit within this limit. So I hope you enjoy that. Any comments or thoughts are appreciated. Thanks once again and see you next time. Bye bye. And okay, next will be next presentation will be Ikuika san. Yes, thank you. I'll share my PowerPoint. So I will be uh, talking about um, an anime called Haibane Renmei and uh, in its English translation, I think it is referred to as the Grey Wings. Uh, first of all, quick background information about me. So, of course, I really enjoy anime and Japanese art and culture in general, but I feel like I am not that well versed into anime and manga. I'm not a connoisseur, but I, when I find something that influences me, it influences me really much. 
and I love poetry in general and I love writing myself like poetry or um, uh, short stories and I am not into anything that's action anything that involves um, a lot of movement it just doesn't work well with my head for some reason so this already excludes a lot of animation I think Yes, uh, by the way, I am uh, from Bulgaria and um, I'm also a French citizen. I have double citizenship. I have lived in the UK also for several years and I am a um, mixed scholarship research student here in Kyoto and I'm working on machine translation. All right, uh, about the anime, it wasn't manga first. Um, but I am familiar with um, its uh, anime version. It is a television series that was uh, filmed uh, in the span of four years, directed by Tomokazu Tokoro, and it's based by the manga by Yoshitoshi Abe. You can see an extract from the original manga. The drawing style is uh, extremely similar. Okay, I have written a quick synopsis. It will sound a little bit dry because a lot will be missed out. A lot has to do with emotion and imagery, but here is my quick attempt. The protagonists, human-like creatures with wings and halos, live in a community in a small rural town. They are in fact humans who have died. They just wake up in this place, not remembering their life, nor how they have died. The story begins as a new girl, Rakka, appears in the sad place, and we follow her getting used to her new life. Her mentor, Reki, has a very secretive character. We learn that, unlike the rest of the community, both of them have grey wings, which implies that they have done something wrong in their lives. They end up helping each other in a number of ways. So what is special about this anime for me? First of all, there is the completeness of the imagined world. I think it's comparable to works of art like The Lord of the Rings or let's say Star Wars. It's just so complete um, and so different from the real world. It feels like everything fits so neatly like the way their world is. Also, openness to interpretation. I feel like uh, many people can relate to this film, even though the story is so, so much fiction, it's nothing that could actually happen to people, but there is a general sense of maybe feeling confused, not belonging, a change in one's life. And I love the strong feelings and the poetic imagery. Uh, for example, you can see an image of nature, there is a lot of beautiful natural imagery. Uh, however, it always comes together with the emotions of the characters, like it is raining in critical moments. There are lots of symbols, for example, we see a raven um, here in Kyoto. When I hear a raven, sometimes I, I think about these moments of this anime. Then some favorite quotations and images, so kind of uh, both verbal and visual quotations that have marked me. Uh, when is when Raka says to the raven, I don't remember you, but I know that you matter to me. Um, I think this really speaks strongly of friendship and its uh, deepest basis and not just um, superficial things that you can easily forget. Uh, then I love the image of Raka running in the rain at some point when she was going through a personal crisis, just... Uh, this feeling of wanting to run as far as possible, run away from herself, reach some kind of limit. There is literally a limit of their town and their world in the anime. And then, um, okay, this requires some background, but everyone has a, a true name that happens to be revealed at some point in the story. So Reki name first she thinks that it's to be smashed but then she realizes it's actually stepping stone so two completely different things and i think this sums up a lot of the beauty of japanese art for example haiku just how one thing like one kanji um, or um, related kanjis that are pronounced in the same way can make you think of completely different things and that's why there's very often a metaphor kind of a tongue-in-cheek, saying something, but meaning something different. 
And finally, I'm not going to read this, but this is actually a book that I wrote. And in order for me to show uh, how this anime has influenced me personally, I have put here two extracts um, that were partly inspired by this anime. One is an image of a character that is a painter and mysteriously painting something. And another one is a character running in the forest in a critical situation and kind of a description of nature. I guess that will be all and um, thank you for listening and I really recommend you see this anime or the original manga if you have the opportunity.